We're going for 55,000 subscribers, comic fam. Hit the like, slap the subscribe. Enter to win by commenting this whatnot exclusive of Invincible number one. Enjoy your trending comics list. Another one. Another list. We got an Overstreet Price Guide advisor in the house. Russ, how you feeling? I am fantastic, Tom. This is such a great list this week because there are a ton of really affordable keys and most of them have good upside for the future. Affordability. You know I like to hear that, comic fam, at the list at number 10. We have Star Wars Darth Vader, the Chris Sprouse variant issue number 20 seeing $15 average sales featuring the Mandalorian but he took his helmet off so is he a Mandalorian well he's got the dark saber I digress because this features Grogu on the cover and many have believed long before the release of this book that this marks the first appearance of baby Yoda this book is a long time coming and was pre-selling for over $30 on news that Grogu was going to be on the front cover of this book now this is a perfect storm because this hasn't actually actually taken place in Star Wars canon in the comics. So people have been waiting for a key moment like this for quite some time. How long? Well, let's take you back through some of the comic books. Back in 2002, Star Wars Tales issue number 13 at the very end of the book features a bunch of younglings, a bunch of little babies. And one of the babies is a species related to Yoda. It's undefined, but it looks like baby Yoda. Now, this is back in 2002, long before the series. Clearly, that is not the intention However, it doesn't stop the $55 average sales for that book. Then we have Star Wars Insider Magazine. This was a PX exclusive that was distributed through the, through the Diamond Catalog. This is issue 195 featuring Baby Yoda on the cover. But it's a magazine. People still pay upwards of $70 average sales for that book. And it didn't stop there because then we have Star Wars Insider Magazine issue number 200. This cover is... There's a trade dress and a virgin. Trades go for 10. Virgins go for upwards of 35. Both really affordable. Cover done by Peach Momoko. And I think because of all of those things, this book has become the favorite of many claiming that this is actually the first appearance of Grogu on the cover. However, then we have Die, Die, Die number 14, a 14 issue run by Robert Kirkman that is a homage to Superman versus Muhammad Ali. And on the inside, you have them brawling. And in the stadium, there's a bunch of intellectual properties, baby Grogu included. So we have four different five, if you include the version of Star Wars Insider 200, that individuals look at as the first appearance of Grogu. But Star Wars as a comic book, getting it on the cover is really what people were waiting on, which is why this book blew up. Die, Die, Die being an interior appearance is an interesting one, but that book is selling for $25. Now we have cover appearances, we have interior appearances, we have photo covers and painted covers, all of them do feature Grogu and they are all selling for a premium. Which is your favorite? And next at the list at number nine, we got Booster Gold back on this list from the future issue number one because of the CW. Casting has been made, although not confirmed. It really looks like we got Booster Gold coming to Legends of Tomorrow. $75 average sales, $240 for a CBCS 9.8. Now, the last time we talked about this book was because it was the first appearance of Blackguard played by Pete Davidson in the Suicide Squad movie. He met an untimely fate very, very quickly. Well, now we're actually talking about Booster Gold because we have news that Donald Faison, Turk Turkleton from Scrubs, is cast to be in a CW show. Now, they had a little bit of a description about what he does and they used words such as golden years boost and unauthorized time traveler these point very much to booster gold's description we also have to keep in mind that he is homies with blue beetle that's right and we also have an increase of 178 percent in copies sold on a book that has routinely made our trending list in the last four years because people love booster gold in 1986 dan jurgens created this classic classic character he also created superman's doomsday and it's even more interesting to note that booster gold is the one that gave doomsday his name
Comic fam, we cannot do what we do without the best comic app in existence. We're talking key collector comics available for both Androids and iPhones. Use code TOM101. You're going to get a free two-week subscription of the app in its entirety. However, 95 plus percent of the app, all the comic books, the key information is all there for you for free. Catalog your comics, get suggested pricing, keep up on the market and support the show. Next at the list at number eight, making so many Marvel fans happy. We have Truth Red, White, and Black issue number one. We are seeing $20 average sales and $230 high sale for a CGC 9.8. We have to keep in mind that when Falcon and Winter Soldier came out, this book was selling for $600 to $900 in a CGC 9.8. So why is there a 150% increase in copies sold this week, Tom? This is an essential read for comic collectors. It's a very important run and it's renowned. In the last year, if you wanted to grab any one of these books, they were selling for the highest they ever have in comic history. Right now, this is kind Kind of the opposite spec effect. If you wanted it, then this is the best time to get it, which is why the 150% uptick in copies sold. But what triggered this reminder? Well, it's because Marvel has decided to re-release the collected edition for the first time since 2004. And some of these collected editions, they spike really hard because once they sell out, members have to wait for the reprints of them. And Marvel just took their time to do this. So that original run from 2004 has seen heights for the collected editions of upwards of $300. So clearly, a lot of members have been waiting to own this set and now they're going to be able to. So this classic series written by Robert Morales and drawn by Kyle Baker was printed in 2003 and issued as a graphic novel a year later. No wonder people have been scrambling for this. The interesting thing about this though is that a lot of times you see a graphic novel announcement and the single issues go down in price. Right now the opposite effect is happening. So you guys go and find them if you can. Great opportunity to grab an important key book on the low. Next at the list at number seven. Hit that like like button. Let's talk about Secret Wars 2. Number three, we have the first appearance of the Beyonder in his human form because of a cartoon coming to Disney+. Plus. When I first saw this list, I'm like, number three, you mean Titania? Oh no, the Beyonder appearance. $15 average sales, $170 for a CGC 9.8. For the first time, we see Beyonder in his body form. The closest thing to a godlike figure in the Marvel comic books, we have an omnipotent being who is more child like because he's curious because he doesn't even know he's a god and he has no knowledge of our reality and this is a strange character to see on spec radar because of something coming to the screen because we are getting him in moon girl devil dinosaur but it will be played by lawrence Fishburne. Now, this is not to be confused with Omnipotentus, who was introduced <laughs> yeah, in right. the Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur yeah, run, true. and Galactus was Omnipotentus's herald and Silver Surfer's Galactus's herald. So another one of those many, many layers of godlike figures. So big and daunting. This Secret Wars number two series was big and daunting. There were nine issues and 31 tie-ins. I know a lot of people in this era of Marvel that kind of gave up because there were so many extra things to read if you you wanted to know the full Beyonder story. I low-key enjoy this event better than the first Secret Wars event. I think it's important people read it. It's wacky. It's just a strange narrative, but this Beyonder comes to Earth and doesn't know how to create a body for himself. So the only thing he knows of is the superheroes that he met during Secret Wars. So he is actually first seen as an amalgamation of multiple characters. He looks like an action figure all put together. So we got Morpheus doing the voice of the Beyonder. We got Lunella, Moon Girl's grandparents, being featured in the same solicitation, Mimi and Pops. And it's being described as a lighthearted, fun, near Saturday morning cartoon feel. So I don't really think they're going to be doing this huge narrative and make this character as crazy powerful as he actually is in the comic books. Now, Lawrence Fishburne is actually signed on to be a producer, and his Beyonder is described as being self-centered and mysterious, but he misunderstands humans. If you know him as an actor, you've seen him do serious things, but he also has amazing comedic timing. I think he's going to bring a certain flair to this character. An increase of 140% for this comic book that came out in 1985, the second Marvel event, written by Jim Shooter and drawn by Al Milgram. 
Number six on the list, Star Wars Darth Vader number six. Now keep in mind, this is volume two, not the Dr. Aphra volume. This is the second volume. This features the first full appearance of Grand Inquisitor. $85 average sales and $600 for a CGC 9.8. With an increase of 533%, I suspect some spec is taking place over in the comic book marketplace. Written by Charles Soule, Francesco Mattina doing the illustrations. We have a comic book that follows one of the most intriguing and pivotal moments in all of Star Wars canon. We have Anakin becoming Lord Vader. But... In his prime, something we haven't seen hit the screen. And I'll remind the community that if you like all the stuff that's happening on Disney+, Plus, the thing that you cannot underestimate is what's about to take place in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. We're going to get the cinematic retelling of what I think Star Wars fans have wanted most beyond seeing a young Luke Skywalker, beyond seeing Boba Fett. We're going to see Anakin rise to his prime as Sith Lord. Now, as we see Darth Vader ascending to his full power, he's still healing and getting used to using this new suit. He is gifted by Emperor Palpatine, a team called the Inquisitorius. There is a Grand Inquisitor, but there is a full team of Jedi hunters. Now, we have news that Rupert Friend has been cast to be in the new Obi-Wan, and there is substantial evidence that he could be playing the Grand Inquisitor. Especially when you consider that there are rumors of a live-action adaptation of the Inquisitors. You can't have the team without the Grand character. Next at the list at number five, we got some Craven spec taking place. Spectacular Spider-Man issue number 244 for seeing a low $3 average sale and a high sale for a raw copy of $28, but it's definitely hovering around the $15 marker. Now, this book features the first appearance of Alyosha Cravenoff, the son of Craven. Now, we've been talking about Aaron Taylor Johnson being in the Craven series, but we had news this week that Russell Crowe has been cast in the Craven series. Well, if he's playing Craven himself, could Aaron be playing Craven's son? We know that it's going to be featured about the Craven family. I think the 1900% increase in copies sold this week for this book demonstrates the critique of Aaron Taylor Johnson's casting announcement of the villain Craven. Having a Craven movie as his own standalone is kind of strange in itself. He's a villain, he's a serial killer, he's demented, he goes full crazy and kills himself in the end because he just can't kill Spider-Man. Like, it's a strange mashup for a character to hold his own movie. What if Russell Crowe is actually this person? And what's also intriguing is that Russell Crowe is likely going to be a character that's going to go up against the God Butcher in Thor Love and Thunder as a god, Zeus, who's probably going to get killed. So now we have two different characters Russell Crowe can play, and I think both of them are on the chopping block. And keep in mind that Russell Crowe is not the only one double-dipping in the MCU. Aaron Taylor Johnson also played Quicksilver, albeit very briefly. Well, this book coming out in 1997, written by J.M. D. Mateus and drawn by Luke Ross, is a great spec book for as low as it's selling for. May have some big upsides. Next at the list at number four, the next comic that has firmly cemented its way to my key status to hunt for X-Men Adventures issue number one, the first appearance of the 1997 X-Men animation retold in comic books. This comic has come up on our list multiple times in the last four years, and it was only recently optioned. This book is hot, and I don't think it's ever not going to be hot. Now, there are so many 90s kids that this is just their childhood. They loved this book. They loved the animated series. So news, we just found out that it's now going to be a 10 episode series and it'll be released mid 2023 that's all it takes for this book to be back on the list this week with a 158 percent increase in copies sold $25 average sales, $300 high for a CGC 9.8. Keep in mind when the news broke, this reached $400. And CBCS copies in the last two months could have been secured for under $200. It just shows that little fluctuation has happened, but 
a little news went a long way for this book. And in four years, this book has routinely came up on the mic. Last year, there were only two newsstand sales that took place. One for $800, one for $1,300. And I haven't found a sale since then. I think that book is prime for spec to blow up. Now, this book was published in 1992, written by the amazing Ralph Macchio, not to be confused with The Karate Kid, and interior art by Steve Lightley. Making those funny books for them Utes at the list <laughs> at number three, ASM 637. We got Craven Spec. We got Spider Girl spec. We have Madam Web spec. We have a perfect storm taking place. $60 average sales, a high sale set in February of $220 for a CGC 9.8. Now, while it seems like this book may have gone from zero to 60 in no time, this is a major key book and there is a ton of appearances and deaths. People have been asking about this book all week at the shop. We have the first appearance of Kane as Tarantula. He emerges from the ground because he was once dead with all those eyes on his face looking really gross. But we also have the death of the first Madam Web. We also have Julia Carpenter becoming the second Madam Web. Keep that in mind because that'll be important because she was formerly known as Spider Girl. We have Anya Corazon, great spec character who takes the mantle of Spider Girl but wouldn't go full Spider Girl and take on the name until Young Allies issue number five. Show that comic on the screen because it's super affordable. We also have the death of Sasha Cravenoff, the daughter of Craven, and we have the death of the Grim Hunter. 2,433% increase in copies sold this week is the biggest mover and shaker this entire week. We also do have a great variant cover art by Mike Files that's going for $50 average sales. And there's a variant second printing cover art by Michael Lark that's seeing $35 average sales. An announcement last week that Dakota Johnson, you know from Suspiria, amazing horror movie, by the way, super disturbing, is going to portray Madam Web. This is the same reasoning behind Spectacular Spider-Man 244. We just got done telling you about it, where Russell Crowe is going to possibly portray Craven, thus making Aaron Taylor Johnson spec make sense. Well, Dakota Johnson is a young woman, and Madam Web is traditionally an older woman in the comic books, unless you look at the second Madam Web, who is actually Julia Carpenter, Spider-Girl, which kind of makes this all a book worth grabbing. This is probably not the last time we're going to hear the name Craven off before this movie is released. Comic fam, if you enjoy what we do for you every single week and you want to help support the show, give us an excuse to send you comic books every single month. Our February subscription box is in open enrollment for three more days. And in each box, we have multiple exclusives going out. The first being Thor issue 20 cover art done by Alex Maleev featuring the first appearance of the God of Hammers, Donny Cates goodness. And what's the second book going in each box? An incredible book done by Tony Fleece and Trish Forstner. We have the I Know What You Did Last Summer variant of Stray Dogs Dog Days number one. One per box. We got the creative team behind Stray Dogs to work with us. Amazing. Thank you to all of the amazing creators who collaborate with us to serve the best community in the world. It's you guys. Next up, the list of number two, Star Wars High Republic Adventures, issue number one from IDW. $8 average sales, $60 high sales for a CGC 9.8. Now, this is kind of a kid's version of these adventures, and there's a lot of brand new Padawans that are all being trained by Master Yoda. First appearance of Lula Telsola. We have Zine and Crix. Torben, also known as buckets of blood. We have Court the Padawan and Marchion Rowe, the Eye of Nile. A cameo. 200% increase in copies sold this week. Now, this was released in February 2021, so it is a newer series, and a lot of people favored the main Star Wars High Republic over the High Republic Adventures. But we do have rumors this week that Disney Plus is going to be working on a Star Wars show geared towards a younger audience, and it's been described as Stranger Things in Space, but we don't have any actual confirmation yet. Star Wars be blowing up nonstop all across the board. It makes sense why members want to secure a copy, if not multiple copies, of issue one of a run, regardless if it's Marvel that's publishing it. I got to hear what the comic fam thinks about this list. Any of these affordable books pique your interest? Comment down below. It'll answer you to win our 55K milestone giveaway. We'll pick a random comment from one of these videos by random so you can get a whatnot exclusive Omni-Man variant of Invincible number one. Now, Russ, let's send him with the most trending book in the comic book marketplace this past week. 
Number one on the list, another repeat offender. We have talked about this book multiple times since September 2019, and right now it's back on the list. Hot as ever, Amazing Spider-Man number 210, first appearance of Madam Web, $165 average sales, and we had a 9.6 that sold for $675. That 9.6 was up 14% since its last sale in December, and these aren't outliers because we had a $650 sale take place this week, as well as a $750 sale. This book is hot. It made the hot 10 with Gem Mint from Gem Mint Collectibles. It's your boy, Gem Mint. And we have an increase of copies sold of 1,300%. This Dakota Johnson announcement blew up the internet. Now, Madam Webb is a clairvoyant medium who was born blind, and she has been used by Peter Parker to help him solve some crimes. This is a classic story written in 1980 by Denny O'Neill and drawn by John Romita Jr., so we have Madam Web as a superhero for the first time spiking, as well as Julia Carpenter spec because of Dakota Johnson. So are we going to see Julia Carpenter, Madam Web? Because that will definitely lead to other spec to take place. Let's help the community by putting them in the right direction. Her cameo appearance, Julia Carpenter, that is, is in Secret Wars issue six, the first Marvel event. And then in issue seven of that same run, we get her first full appearance. But by the way, it's a double key because this is the first time that She-Hulk battles Titania and both who are coming to a Disney Plus show soon, as always. Geek responsibly. Enough said. Comic fam, join us on the best new app to buy and sell comic books and collectibles, Whatnot. We rock the house every single Wednesday for Whatnot Wednesday, doing dollar start auctions that last as little as 60, 30, 20 seconds long. It's a blast. Come support what we do and take a look at these two other videos. We made them for you. Have a great week. Tom, I just thought of this. Okay, all right. So we have Aaron Taylor Johnson and Dakota Johnson. They're both last names Johnson, all right? Now, Johnson and Johnson, Band-Aid conspiracy. Band -Aids. I was spec just say Band -Aids. on Band-Aids, guys. You heard it here first. Band-Aid spec, first video ever, done.